Welcome back to the WSL update. If you are just joining us, we have crowned a world champion. John John Florence from Hawaii has achieved his goal for the year. And he's got a final to surf up against Connor Coffin, which will be starting momentarily. This is going to be an interesting final. I know that these guys are competitive. I know that Connor Coffin as a rookie, been only one other rookie making the final this year, Jack Freestone, up against John John as well. As you can see, Jordy there, you know, a bit of a hug out there during the expression session. So again, congratulations to John Florence. But this final, kind of setting this up, it's uh, kind of getting a little bit interesting for Connor. I mean, he could be the first rookie to win in a long time. Yeah, that'd be so cool for Connor. You know, we we know that he's if, with a win. He's at 16th. With uh, you know a second, he's at 19th. He's inside the qualification zone. He's now battling Kyo for Rookie of the Year. Probably uh, it's all going to come down a pipeline for that story. So this you know the stories just continue to build for us. And and yeah, yeah. I was just tripping out just now, just noting that um, Connor Coffin, John John, Kolohe, all you know making it to the semis, all Hurley athletes. Crazy that those that that group is you know well, so strong. Beyond that, those guys have all been competing since they were diapers, really. I mean, uh, you know, Menahuni Division through all that time, they've been going and competing for yeah. national titles and uh, regional titles, and um, you know, here they are on the big stage, and we've seen a world title being given to John John That's Florence, Connor Coffin making his first final. Legitimate, legitimate generational shift happening right before our eyes. You know, it's official. We've seen that slow transition from the mix and the and the and uh, here we go, live action. Oh, he's already well. I guess we're gonna send it up to Joe and Potts in the booth. <laughs> we'll come back after that there for the go. post show. But I, we've got the final underway. I told you so. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pete Strider. And Ross Williams, a big moment for all of Hawaii, for all of the world of surfing. John John Florence takes his first world title and has another heat to surf in the final of the male Rip Curl Pro, taking on Connor Coffin, representing Santa Barbara, the rookie, handing the title to Florence by taking out Jordy Smith along the way. Unbelievable morning, and it's just getting past 9.30. We've had so much to celebrate, Potts. Yeah, we have uh, just amazing moments there. Well-deserved, too. I mean, you know, he's constantly been uh, a standout through this entire year. You know, we had a, that little package of what was going on this year. John was uh, constantly producing stuff like this, Joe. Just the big flyaway aerial landing. Absolutely perfect. John Florence, the new world champion. And we all know what happens after uh, all that pressure valve is released. Fireworks will follow. And that's exactly what happened on wave number one. Massive punt for John John Florence. His first wave ridden at being a world champion turns into a radical forehand punt. We were wanting to see what his momentum would be like. We've seen this scenario unfold in the past where they clinch before the last seat of the contest. Will he celebrate or go on to win another big event this season? Now waiting for these guys to get set into position. Co Connor Coffin out there wearing the blue jersey, shadowing John a little bit down the sandbank. We just heard this horn sound once again. So it looks like that big air might have just been a warm up <laughs> for the final. Everyone so excited on deck. Now the first official ride here. Connor Coffin pulls in deep, ends up going down. Now Florence with priority. And seeing that brand new clock, we had 30 minute semifinals. It'll be a 35 minute final, Potts. Yeah, 35 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> I think everyone thought that first wave from John was uh, the first wave of the final. It wasn't. Connor Coffin opens his account. Big sets coming through out the back. Very similar occasion to how Joel Parkinson won his world title. Josh Kerr helped him along the way. And then Kersey said, come on, <laughs> let me have it. And uh, Joel said, no, not today. Joel said, name it, anything you want, I'll give it to you. Except well, except for the Pipe Masters. <laughs> that was one of our great finals. More recently happening on the women's side, Tyler Wright moving on to the final with Carissa Moore. She ended up taking off switch stance, just enjoyed the moment. The pressure was already being released, and she just took the time in the lineup to celebrate her first world title. And what a special European leg it's been. Last handful of seasons, we keep going down to Pipe, we keep going down to Maui this year men and women finishing one spot early crowning our world champions you know what and it was one of those crazy years too coming into portugal i think mathematically there was about nine guys that could have uh, put themselves in that world title race and systematically john john florence eliminated them one by one all the way here to the finals uh, geordie smith needed to make the finals and win this event to do it uh, to take it to hawaii and create a three-horse race but uh, not to be 
kind of coffin was uh, the spoiler in that situation. Now John John's Florence first official wave of this final as he's winding up for another massive alley-oop. A ton of air underneath that surfboard. It would have been a perfect number if he could have come down with that one. That is a good message on how he's going to approach his first heat as the world champion. Exactly. Uh, this is just a sign of things to come, Joe. John John Florence, your new world champion. Talk about confidence right here. As he takes off on his first wave, races down the line. You could tell what was going to happen. He widens his stance, clicks with it. Absolutely perfect. Six or seven feet above the lip there, just poking the nose in, unfortunately, and goes down. So John making it quite clear what he's going to do out here in the finals. What a huge morning for John John Florence, kicking off the year, winning the Quicksilver in memory of Eddie Aikau, and maybe the biggest conditions ever run for that specialty big wave contest. Called that day the best wave of his life, best day of his life, went on to win Rio, put himself in a title race, and finally makes it official. How do you compare this year to any other year in your life, Potts? What, winning the world title? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's the pinnacle, you know, it's, it's what you work hard for, it's the highs and the lows along the way that make this moment taste so sweet for John. You know, you heard in that little piece there, you know, he's been learning from uh, the world's best on how to sort of act and, and apply yourself, taking a, a page out of the books of the likes of Mick Fanning and Adriana de Souza, two of the hardest working professional surfers in the world. And uh, well, he's done it his own way. He's got a different style, he's got a different approach, unique, and, and in this day and age, Joe, very hard to do that. The Florence family celebrating this moment as he has some talented athletes in his family. Nathan Florence, Ivan Florence, his mom Alex probably watching on as he's up again, the world champ winds up tail high, reverse, pulls it down without a problem. Showcasing the air game in this final against Connor Coffin. Florence's alley-oop attempt, 1.83. Now getting a keeper to take the lead. Yeah, 1.83 for, uh, that could have been a 10. Oh. But uh, John's made it quite clear what he's gonna do. He's gonna have fun. He's gonna throw caution to the wind. Connor Coffin, well, it's up to him to try and win this thing. John's not going to give it to him. He's made that clear. Races down the line. Bang. Beautiful rotation there. Spins it around so easily. He makes those things look too easy now. He's going to have to do something different next year, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the double rotation as John flies through the air, almost connects with a drone and pulls that one off. So the first substantial score of the finals. Races down the line. You can see starting to widen that stance. And watch that front foot slides all the way to the nose of the board. A little bit of a grab right there. John, one of the first guys, really, since the 70s to wax his board all the way to the nose. So cool, checking out his boards in the locker room. It's all the way to the tip. Back in the 70s, it was because you were doing the hang five. <laughs> John, John's hang five and through the air. That front foot is so incredible to see above the lip for Florence. Connor Coffin to answer. What a timeless style, positioning nice and deep. He won't find the exit there. John, a 7.0 as Connor Coffin is celebrating his first ever championship tour final, playing a spoiler role in the world title race as he eliminated Jordy Smith in the last semifinal. So you see what's on the line for, for Connor. He ended up celebrating with John, getting the world title to close out with one event early before Pipe. But for Connor, he was in a position where he needed something massive to come through to requalify. Doesn't get much better than this. Joe, if he, uh, if he wins this event, he goes to number 16 in the world. And if he comes second, he goes to number 19 in the world. So that puts him right inside the cut line with one event to go. So amazing stuff for Connor Coffin. One good result. That's all it takes these days. I mean, it's been such an up and down year. No one's really taken a stranglehold. John's won one event. Matty Wilco, the only one to win two events. If John wins this, he will put himself in that uh, bracket of two wins for the year. But it's the consistency, I think, that uh, plays a, a massive part. You, know, you've, uh, you just go back to Joel Parkinson, Joe. He won the world title without winning an event and then managed to win pipe at the end of that. So consistency, very, very important. Almost as important as a win. Not a bad bonus. You go back to the last Hawaiian to win. Three-time world champ Andy Irons, first world title. You're back in 2002 with four wins that season, winning Bells, Tahiti, Mundaka, and Pipeline. Next year, he went to five wins. Third world title, Andy had two wins, four finals, had a lot of consistency there. Obviously the year with five wins, four wins, he was absolutely demoing everybody on tour, completely unstoppable. 
before that, Sonny Garcia taking one for Hawaii in the year 2000. And the first in 93, Derek Ho. And that came down to pipeline to make that final decision. Florence up again. Looks like he wants to ramp up. Ton of speed. Clear for takeoff. World champ, full rotation, alley-oop. Stomps it perfect into a carve. He's having a ball out there. <laughs> first alley-oop incomplete. Now he's going to land everything. His previous era, 7.0. Did you like that one better? Uh, yeah, I do. I think, uh, I think the alley-oop alley is uh, way more attractive, uh, a lot more height. Not many guys can do that, really. Let's have a look. John takes off. You know, once he misses that first section, focusing down the line, you know exactly what's going to happen as he connects with the left. Beautiful rotation, lands that thing perfectly, straight into the next maneuver. That's the thing that John does better than anyone, I reckon, Joe, is the transition between those big airs into the next turn. It's almost seamless for John John Florence, your new world champion. How good would that sound to him? Unbelievable day for John John. Alley oop. What a feeling. Full rotation. I think the one thing, if you had to separate the air, guys, we had this on the morning show the other day, I think John, maybe you'd have to separate him with style above the lip. Yeah, you know, he, and, and that's the thing, he does it He does it with such a unique style. I love the way his hands are down by his side, and then he just clicks in absolutely perfect there. Style a massive part of surfing, Joe, and it's been that way ever since day dot. You know, you look, you go all the way back to the likes of Mickey Dora, the cat, his nickname was, and... Why? Because he had those, that cat-like approach to the wave. John John Florence, very similar. Pretty cool. Looking back in history of the great styles of the sport, John John Florence came on tour and had all the old school veterans wondering how he was so progressive and keeping his arms so subtle, often compared to a skateboarder with that style, keeping his arms just silent next to his body. And then he uses them when he needs it above the lip. It, was, it looked so different. It wasn't too quickly after that where we started seeing every gram at the local beaches <laughs> trying to surf just like John. Yeah, and even more so now that he's the world champion. You know, this to me, Joe, is uh, the first of many. I think um, he's got the taste of it now. Um, he's got that trophy that's going to go on his mantelpiece. And uh, he's now part of a, a club, the world champions. And I'll tell you what, he's going to go on to win many more. It seems just like he's fulfilling his destiny. If you talk to the surfers on tour, they call him the best surfer in the world to date with what he does in heavy conditions from his backyard at Pipeline to Chopu and Cloud Break. He's always the favorite to win. And then coming to Beach Breaks, Florence, a couple of titles in Brazil to his name, dominant in those conditions. And obviously a guy that signs up to surf gigantic conditions. So the Outer Reefs right by his house on Oahu, where he just checks every box, signs up for everything. He's the surfer, surfer, and officially the world champion. There's nothing this kid cannot do, Joe, that's for sure. I mean, you talk about a, a well-rounded surfer, you know, the complete package in every way, shape, or form. One of the nicest kids you'll meet. He's got manners, he's been brought up properly. And that just goes into uh, everything that he's done in his career, has uh, all come to this day here and has crowned the world champion. Wow, unbelievable stuff. What a day for John John as he's soaking it in. Pocket sevens in this final, all above the lip. Alley-oop, front side, tail high reverse for his first seven, and a gigantic alley-oop. He almost pulled three straight airs. Always surfs like he's making another movie. Making that film, A View from a Blue Moon. Last season, he invited some of his favorite surfers with him. Guys like Felipe Toledo. He wants to be around the best surfers in the world to push his game as well. As we see Connor with priority pots, a 1-3-3 and a .93. Now matching rookie Jack Freestone for a rookie to go all the way to a final in their first year on tour. Yeah, I mean, 23 minutes and 45 remaining. It's not over yet. I mean, Connor, all he needs is uh, you know, a nice big barrel. He proved up against Jordy Smith. Jordy had him against the ropes. Connor answered back with a nine-point ride, so... I'm sure Connor's going to be digging deep here towards the back part of this heat. John just absolutely floating on a cloud right now. It's going to take him a while before that all sinks in too. I mean, it's uh, at the moment he's thinking, I've just won the world title, but it, it's going to take a few days. He's going to wake up one morning and go, hey, guess what? I'm the world champion. <laughs> what a feeling. 
This is our 40th year crowning world champions here with the World Surf League. Florence being the 40th champion as we look back in history. Peter Townend, the very first. Some of your heroes back then. Wayne Rabbit, Bartholomew, Sean Thompson busted down the door to create what pro surfing is today. And Florence doing it in a very unique way. His previous years, he was the guy to beat, but injuries took him down. He had the season in 2014 where he went from a semifinal with Kelly at Chopu, the heat of the year, decided in a tiebreak decision, then to a final to Jordy Smith at lower trestles, then to a win in France, all in transition. Now at 22 and a half on the clock, we always like getting the feeling from the fans down on the beach. Strider, Raspberry, Wazalewski. Is it starting to sink in yet down there? I think it's sinking in. Everybody's down here enjoying the beach. I mean, can you believe it? A world title right here for these guys to watch go down. They're feeling pretty good about it, let me tell you. And they've got some serious smiles. Guys are uh, claiming 808 out of the crowd here. It's pretty amazing. I mean, what do, you, what do you think? You show up at the beach, it's early in the morning, it's cold, it's offshore, you're going to come down to check out a, a surf contest, and you get to watch a world title go down. doesn't get any better than that. I saw the mayor up there of Peniche, he was just through the moon. Everybody's just super stoked to be able to crown a world title here in Portugal, and, you know, that's one feather into their cap, and right now in the water, we get to see John John and Connor going out in the final. It's a good feeling to be back down here on the beach, let me tell you. What a special opportunity for the locals in Peniche. Definitely earning it through the different lay days and going mobile through multiple calls. Will Strider, you personally got to see John grow up. Every time you went over to the north shore of Oahu, it feels like it was his destiny. Getting on cover shots before he was even in double digits and the youngest to surf in the Triple Crown. What is this big picture going to mean going when he returns to Hawaii to compete in the Pipe Masters? Well, you thought there was going to be a party when Keanu won in France. Let me tell you, it is going to go crazy when he gets home. I'll be honest, uh, you know, growing up, watching him grow up as such a, you know, a young, you know, coming up kid that had all this energy and, and having so much fun, I wasn't sure if he was going to turn that corner and become that world title athlete. You know, watching him grow up, he just seemed like he was ha on such a fun path. We weren't sure where he was going to go with it. And when he stuck his foot into the ring and said, I want a world title, after winning the Eddie Aikau this morning or the this year with the flow, it's just one of those feelings of oh wow, it can be done. And and I think any of these guys on tour, if they really want it, they just have to put their foot into it and say that they want it and walk around like they want it. That was something that we saw to John John this year. The whole new face, a whole new composure, the chest, the, just the shoulders, just walking around like he wanted it. And you know, Potts could probably you know speak to this. You gotta look like you want it. So cool, Strider getting that insight as he is going to enjoy this final with the fans here in Peniche. 20 minutes to decide our champ for the male rip curl pro. John's heating up on the rights, winding up for another backflip oh. rotation. Stomps it and goes down. <laughs> Pocket sevens, it's all about airs for our world champion in this heat. Yeah, well, he's had enough barrels uh, so far this event. Why not go to the air? seal the deal with uh, something that's really he's used to his advantage this year Joe I mean he's you know you talk about the aerial game he's, he's right up there in the mix with Medina with with Toledo with Ilo Ferreira with Julian Wilson there's a handful of guys that are just absolutely amazing throw uh, throw the, the 44 year old Kelly Slater in that mix as well but you know he's just been using those things to great success so far this year. Connor Coffin locks in nice and deep. This one's staying wide open. The Californian comes flying out. Layback power hack just to finish and seal the deal. One of the best styles in the game. Getting shacked, playing a huge role in the world title race in 2016. So while John goes above the lip, Coffin still hunting down the barrels, and he wants a shot to win his first contest of his career. Smart surfing right there from Connor Coffin. You know, this kid's been uh, just plucking away, just flying under the radar, beautiful deep barrel, slows himself down right at the end to just stick, and then does that trademark turn. I love that turn right there that Connor's got. Tell you what, this kid's uh, got himself back into that requalification situation. Hard work, dedication, and just the belief that he can do this. Taking down Jordy Smith in the semifinals, handing John that world, world title. Now it's, uh, well... He's got to go on and win this thing, Joe. And if he does, he puts himself in uh, 16th place on the world ranking. So big scores. It's about to drop for, uh, for Connor. And also seeing the punt, the rotation wow. of the backflip that Florence 
almost pulled off. We had Medina's version back in Rio. How close did he come here, Potts? Oh, he came so close. Look at that beautiful double grab, perfect rotation, and then just a little bit on the front foot right there goes down. I think he's going to pull one of those off before the end of this heat, that's for sure. But have a look at what Connor's just done. Connor Coffin, 8.60. The best wave of the heat so far. Florence still out in front with pocket sevens. And now Connor needs a 5.47 to create another major upset. Taking out Jordy Smith in the semifinals. And it feels like he's still focused on his whole game plan while the whole beach, the whole world is celebrating a world title. Exactly right. And, you know, he's, he's in a perfect position right now, too. Just looking for a 5.47. You know, the focus is on John. And that's, you know, Connor's kind of been flying under the radar. Everyone thought Geordie Smith was going to take out that semifinal. We were going to have this amazing battle here in the finals. But it, uh, Connor said, hang on a sec. What about me? You know, and he's been doing this all year. He's been producing world-class surfing. I mean, you just got to go back to Bell's Beach where, you know, he took down the best ever at Bell's, really, Mick Fanning, uh, with some incredible surfing. That was unbelievable. Connor Coffin just went down to Bells for the first time, ended up figuring it out, and oftentimes it's a tricky venue for newcomers to really understand where to throw down a carve, and that's kind of one of the biggest things he was known for when he qualified for the tour. We knew he was going to have a solid rail game, a great power base, and really be in sync with a lot of the point breaks on tour. But there's a lot of other po uh, waves in California near his house besides the long point breaks. He can drive down south, kind of surfing, Timmy Curran territory and get absolutely barreled and we got to see that today on finals day yeah you know to me you know he's becoming more and more of a complete surfer as well I mean he's got the air game we don't see it a lot but uh, we know it's there uh, but just that solid base the fundamentals of surfing he's got it down pat you know real solid real old school approach and I love that Connor up now looking for a 5.47 that one had a couple of bumps to start ends up kicking out and Florence will have priority. Connor's been hanging out, well, with his family through the event in France, and then with his buddy, longtime filmer Ryan Perry, behind the scenes, just keeping things comfortable and cruisy into his personal best results in his career on tour. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the celebration here in Paniche. Welcome back to the final here at the Mail Rip Curl Pro Portugal. John John Florence, your new world champion, taking on rookie from Santa Barbara, Connor Coffin. And you look at the stats, 34 heat wins. That's what it took for John John to celebrate a world title. And you look at Connor with 13 wins, one big one, taking out Jordy Smith, which started the celebration early for the Hawaiian to be number one in the world. As you check out the average heat totals, always expecting big numbers from Florence, 14.74. Average in his top two waves throughout big matchups in 2016. Joe Trapel alongside a former world champ in Martin Potter, winning your title back in 1989, which was kind of a runaway title year. You know what it's like to finish with a number one role a little bit early before heading into pipe. Yeah, it's, it feels good, Joe, that's for sure. I mean, Hawaii is such an unpredictable uh, location to have to rely on winning. If you've got to go to Hawaii and, and win something in Hawaii to, to clinch that world title, uh, that's going to be tough. I mean, back in my day, there was three events involved. The Triple Crown, obviously, is Haliva, Sunset, and then Pipeline to finish things off. But uh, just to be able to go in there with, uh, with no pressure whatsoever, I will not be surprised if John walks away with the Pipe Masters this year because there's no pressure. I mean, you can just go out and enjoy it. Uh, it's going to be a crazy uh, winter, but uh, yeah, first time since 2011 that it's finished early. Billabong Pipe Masters begins December 8th. The waiting period extends all the way to the 20th. That's John John Florence, favorite wave in the whole world. A place where he has finaled in the past, a couple of years ago, runner up to Kelly Slater in a super heat. This year he wants to go one step further and take out the whole thing in front of his friends and family. What a bonus to add to the celebration to what's been quite an incredible year. Yeah, unbelievable year. You know, to, to, to kick things off with the Eddie Arcao, you know, just incredible stuff right there. Then to win in two foot Brazil and then uh, clinch the title here. It's just uh, crazy stuff. 
Now checking out John John Florence super deep and he could punch free of a closeout section on demand. He did the same act in the semifinal today against Andino when it looks like there is no clear route to get a completion. There's, How does he do it, Potts? There's no such thing as a closeout if your name is John John Florence, that's for sure. Let's have a look <laughs> at this. I mean, you know, the, we, we call it the doggy door. There's a little gap at the bottom of the wave that just, sometimes it lets you out. John flying through. Okay, let's have a look. Where is he going to... There's a little gap right there, but not really. I mean, he's got that freakish talent to be able to identify situations and react on the, you know, on cue, and he, he did exactly that. I mean, that was a, a virtual impossible wave to make. But like I said, he's feeling it today, that's for sure. Things are going all his way, clinching the world title. Can he go on and win this event? Can he go on and finish off at pipe with uh, what we call bookends, right? You start with a win, finish with a win. That could be just, you know, and both of them being in Hawaii, obviously. John driving through the section. Let's have a look. There's a little gap right there that he just managed to sneak through the end. Even the cameraman thought he wasn't going to make that. So ends up... Going for broke on the inside, punches free. We'll see how that barrel compares to the airs that he's been doing. He's had a seven, a seven zero seven. The barrel, a six point five seven. Doesn't affect his lead out front. Connor now with priority, and just needs a five point four seven to take the first win of his career. Connor has something special when it comes to Portugal and competing. His best result in the QS, a final down at Carcavelos in a heat with Jadson Andre a couple of years back. Had a quarterfinal last year in Portugal on the QS on road to qualify. Connor picking a wave, using priority, and that one's not going to help him out, Potts. No, you know, I think Connor's going to, he's got to look for those big, deep barrels. I thought that one was going to tube right there, but unfortunately, just sort of folding down. More waves approaching. Looks like John's got his eye on a bit of a, a peak coming through right now looking for it. He knows that Connor just looking for a 5.47. Here he goes. Florence now up nice and deep with plenty of room to move. The world champ comes flying out. Little layback off the top. He'll throw the fins towards the beach to finish. He is having a ball, enjoying being the world champ and in surfing in a final for the first time in Portugal. He's made the semis here in the past. Now the chance to win. Looking to better a 7.0 on that wave. Nice little barrel slash to little air combo. I mean, those three good solid maneuvers on that wave. He's trying to better a seven. I think he's going to probably do it. Let's have a look. First part of the wave, nice little tube ride right there. Comes out nice and clean, then just lays into that big turn. Doesn't quite finish the turn off. Why? Because he saw this little ramp at the end there. He had no right doing that. <laughs> As he finishes off a good wave here. It's still waiting for the score to come through, but... A nice clean barrel using both the hands, dragging it just to slow himself down. Now he just drives into this turn. Cuts it short though because he wants to get this last maneuver in. Right there, just punches out towards the beach. Three solid maneuvers there for John. John John Florence getting a number in from his last decision as the fans in Peniche are still celebrating this moment in pro surfing. Rip Curl bringing this event to Super Tubos as part of a search series. And we are so happy to be here to stay. We've crowned so many crazy event winners, but to crown a world champ as well here at Super Tubos is something special that these fans will never forget. We saw them walking down those farm roads over to Fabril to the, get the message that the contest was going on hold. And they'd walk back miles back to the other side just in case there'd be another call watching the free surfs go down. Well, they, they knew that there was a world title on the line, Joe. They knew that there was that possibility of, of John clinching the title here in Portugal. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked because, um, you know, these guys have braved the weather conditions. It's been, you know, the muddy roads, as you said. There's just been all this stuff going on. Uh, the lay days moving, you know, it's... Uh, and, to, and for them to be here today to watch this go down, I'm stoked. So many people to celebrate as part of John John Florence's career. One that we need to catch up with is longtime shaper John Pizel with Strider Wazalewski. We are down here enjoying the moments. We're noticing how loose John is right now, and his shaper John Pizel feeling the same. Let's see what he's got right here as he takes up to the top. Big loop de doop. <laughs> oh, there you go. John looking loose. John, what do you have to say about that? It's just a great day, everybody, and um, we're all super stoked, and I, I, I think, like, 
Everyone here, look at this guy's the most psyched guy all, but um, it's just amazing. I don't even know what to say. It's freaking awesome. Well, congratulations on making him some of the best boards in the world. You know, right now, do you even know what he's on out there? What's he got? Oh, he's on fire out there. <laughs> 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 well, there you go. The boys down here are pumped. We'll get it back up to the booth for this thing to finish out. John is on fire. Can't wait for the on fire model to come out from Pizel Surfboards. Obviously, John on a piece of magic and everyone here to celebrate another big full rotation alley-oop pot. Yeah, well, he was, you know, he wanted to pull one of these off and here it is. Look at the rotation. Absolutely perfect. Those, the feet were stuck on the board and, and the part of that maneuver that's like impresses me with this kid is the the landing straight into the next turn he does that better than anyone you know we we're breaking it down on the show the other day he's definitely at the top of his game right now flying down the line here we go boom look how quick that rotation was stomp the landing and straight into a little floater maneuver joe have a look at the score 9.5 for john john florence for one of the biggest whips above the lip that we see there and had time to combo a finishing move. Let's take another look. Let's just sit back and watch this. I mean, look at that. Landed perfectly too. Soft landing and then straight into the next maneuver. That's the world champion right there, Joe. There's even a bird in the background flying behind him. <laughs> John John influences everyone on the beach. The whole tour looks to him to set the bar above the lip in the barrel. And he's got his world title now in 2016. He was always destined for this moment, but makes it official one event early before going to his home court to compete in the Pipe Masters. This heat's been all about the air show for John. 9-5-7-1-7 before it, throwing away a couple sevens to kick off this heat. Connor went to the barrel, got an 8.6. So he's still in the game. Approaching the five-minute warning, the California needs an 8.08. 808 to take the lead. 808. <laughs> it's all heading that way today, isn't it? Uh, and, and it's doable. I mean, Connor's definitely right in the game right now. I mean, one good wave. He's got priority. He's got five minutes to go. He just needs to wait for one of those big wedges, get nice and barreled, and just do that Connor Coffin big gouging maneuver, and he'll get that score all day long. But uh, time is the enemy right now, just inside the five-minute mark. We start hearing people chanting here in Portugal, 808. Well, that's the area code of the state of Hawaii. And so that's uh, really cool to see some Hawaiians here on hand watching the final day here in Paniche, a beautiful fishing village that is going to have a lot to celebrate. And it's still so early in the morning, 10 o'clock local time. It's getting pretty late over there in Hawaii. Also late at our WSL headquarters in Santa Monica. And they are going to be very busy through the early morning hours as we have a new name on the most prestigious list of our sport. Joining names like yourself, Potts, and obviously the story for Hawaii is going to be a big one. You were around when Derek Ho made it official in 93. What was the reaction like being at home in Hawaii for all the locals to see their first champion? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it was so fitting when Derek Ho won the world title. Not because it was Derek Ho, but because he was Hawaiian. I mean, uh, the, the sport was spawned there. You know, you just go back to the Duke and, and, and the, the word that he spread, you know, the love that he spread, the aloha that that he took with him around the world that, you know, it, I'm surprised there's not more. I mean, there's so many great surfers come out of there. I think Dan Killer, Michael Ho, to me, should have both had a world titles. Um, too good not to have. But, uh, you know, John, obviously, the fourth Hawaiian world champion. I think there's going to be a lot more. I think uh, the floodgates are going to open right now, and Hawaii's going to have that confidence to, uh, like the Brazilians did. You know, Medina won the world title. All of a sudden, De Souza went on to win. Come on, Hawaii, let's see it. And then, obviously, after Derek Ho, it was the great Sonny Garcia, who still rips, still competes in the Triple Crown of Surfing. What was his big story going into that title year, and how did he make it official in 2000? Well, you know, Sonny Garcia just did it on raw power. I mean, he, no one was going to deny Sonny Garcia. He had this frontside gouging maneuver that he just took, he just put people to sleep with. You know, it was just amazing. <laughs> Every time he paddled out, you know, you could see the intent. You could see that it was, uh, you know, it was his destiny to win that world title. No one was going to take it away from Sonny that year. And Sonny was so many finals at the Pipe Masters, always just owning backdoor. Triple and then crowns, too. How many did he get? Oh, the greatest of all time when it com goes to competing at Hollywood Sunset and Pipeline. And then to Andy Irons' dominance, which didn't come early. The first couple of years for Andy, he was working the system. He even fell off tour. The year before Andy's first world title, he finished 10th in the world. He was gaining momentum. 
and then created one of the greatest rivalries with Kelly Slater of all time. Andy went three straight with those world titles, still on the all-time win list. And Florence is starting to head that direction. This heat, a 9-5 and a 7-1-7 in his first heat as the world champ. Connor Coffin matching Jack Freestone this, this year by making a final. And if he gets an 8.08, .08, he can take his first win of his career. Two minutes to go, and Connor does have priority. Yep, that he does. There's some sets approaching. The tricky thing with Super 2 Boss has been in the right place. Um, so far, John's done that, throwing sevens away. 7.0 is 7.07, two of his throwaway scores at the moment. Connor with an 8.6. His backup, well, kind of non existent, just a, a 1.17. 1.33, I beg your pardon. So he's only looking for an 8.08. .08. But time is the enemy right now. 1 minute 25 seconds to go. John's day, really, isn't it? It sure is. What a morning to kick things off. Got his Jeep yellow jersey in the dark to prepare for the heat with Kolohe and Dino. And Dino was so fired up and ready to go. They almost got tangled up on that first exchange. Then things opened up. We got to see how much scoring potential was going to be still left over from yesterday's conditions. Connor taking out Jordy, and that was the key moment since Jordy still had a shot at a world title. He had to go on to win. And boy, did he come close, especially yesterday, turning his heat around with a perfect 10 over Sebastian Zietz. Yeah, you know, you've got to feel for Jordy, but, you know, there was a couple of results along the way that, uh, you know, winning trestles and then getting a 25th in France, you know, had that been a, another quarter final or so, things would have been maybe a little bit different coming in here with a little bit of a different momentum. But Jordy was looking absolutely dangerous this whole event, Joe. He didn't look like losing a, a heat, not even close to losing a heat. And then this morning, unfortunately, going down to Connor with some great surfing from the young Californian. But I think Jordy's going to be in that world title race for many more years to come. Looking at 15 seconds left on the clock to close out the European leg of the season, to close out the male Rip Curl Pro Portugal. Connor left with priority, looking for an 808 to turn this one on the Hawaiian world champ. And a wave's not going to come through as we make it official. John John Florence, your male Rip Curl Pro Champion in 2016 and your new WSL World Champ. We'll take a moment to celebrate not just a year of hard work, but a lifetime of dedication to celebrating this dream. And he'll be heading into Hawaii, the Pipe Masters, as a world champion. Yeah, there he is, the man of the moment. Yeah, well deserved, a lot of hard work. A lot, of, uh, a lot of bumps and lumps along the way. You know, if this kid can stay fit and healthy and, and injury free, I think he's gonna rival the world's best. As far as that wins go, he's in the prime of his life. Still young, still got so much more to give. I can't wait to see what unfolds for this kid's career. As you see all the Hawaiians here, ready to celebrate the Hawaiian flag on hand. John taking his second win of the season. His first one this year back in Rio de Janeiro over Jack Freestone. Here on Jabor on one end of the chair alongside John Paisel. John John Florence, the fourth Hawaiian champ, your 2016 WSL champion. Didn't need to win that final to seal the deal. It was official right before the final began. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes out the next event coming up soon, starting December 8th at the Pipe Masters. Yeah, would not be surprised at all. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes on to win the world title again next year either. This kid is that good. And, uh, he gets dropped off uh, with Rosie, but what a day for this kid. I mean, it uh, doesn't get any better than that. Can't wait to hear from the new world champ, the new champ of this contest. Take it away, Ro. Thank you so much. Well, John John Florence, you've been a world champ for about an hour now. Your favorite moment so far? Uh, I don't even know right now. It's so much taken. I was stoked on winning the event. Can't, I still can't believe I'm world champ. And, oh, it was crazy, just a lot of emotions. <laughs> Well, you won this event, you won in Brazil, you won the Eddy, you've won the world title, Pop Masters, Triple Crown, that's got to be blaring in your face right now as a goal. Um, yeah, I'm not even, 
you know, I'm, I can't wait to get home and surf pipe and stuff, but I'm just thinking about this right now. I'm trying to enjoy it. This has been such a crazy year, and oh, I'm so stoked right now. <laughs> I know you focus on this one, one world title that you've notched up. Kelly Slater's got 11. You wear the number 12 on your back. Is that kind of a goal for you right now to take that record away from Kelly? Oh, I don't know. That's going to take a long time to take that record from Kelly. I'm just going to keep trying to make heats again, I guess, next year. And I don't know. I'm just so stoked. I'm just going to enjoy this and uh, really just enjoy this year. This has been such an amazing year. And um, like I was saying before, it's, the support has been incredible. And I couldn't have done it with a run back at home. And I'm stoked. <laughs> What about sharing that final with Connor Coffin, who helped you win this world title? Oh, that was amazing, you know, and Connor won the heat against Jordy and got me the world title, and then I was just like, holy crap, and I was pretty, felt pretty relaxed going into the heat, actually, I was just like, oh, I'm just going to try airs and just whatever, and it was, um, it ended up working out, I'm stoked to win the event, too, it's sick. And John, I mean, the expectations have been on your shoulders since you're six years old, everyone's touted you as a world champion, but now to actually validate that and to have that re become a reality, how does that sit with you? Um, I, I don't know yet how it sits with me. It's definitely, it's like been my dream. I've worked my whole life towards this. It's, I've watched Kelly and Andy and all those guys win world titles. And I don't know, I'm super stuck. I bet I might cry or something later. <laughs> but I'm just going to yeah, enjoy it right now. Well, John, you've got so much to be proud of. And well done on an amazing year. Your 2016 World Surf League champion, John John Florence. Back to you, John Potts. Thank you, Rosie. What a special moment for John John Florence just to take in and realize what it feels like to call himself the world champion in 2016. And it's an epic competitors pushing him to the fullest from Gabriel Medina, Matt Wilkinson star, Jordy Smith coming with a late charge with another big win at Lower Trestles. There are so many scenarios unfolding when we got into France. There's about nine guys mathematically that could have still rerouted the story that we're seeing today. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, to, to win the world title this year, to me, is one of the most competitive years of, of professional surfing I've seen in a very long time. You know, you go back to those rivalries with Kelly and Andy, it was like a two-horse race pretty much most of the year, trading off wins, you know. This year that we had, um, you know, so many different winners, um, which made things so, so much harder to win. And, you know, to, to be able to come out on top you know, after such a crazy year, it's, it's got to be feeling pretty good. What a special day to celebrate in the career of John John Florence, his first world title, his first title here at Super Tubos for the male Rip Curl Pro as the celebration is going to begin early here on the shores of Peniche. Coming up next, a huge post show with Pete Mel, Strider Wazalewski, and Ross Williams. We'll be right back. you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.